All righty, guys, welcome to tonight's charting session. It is Tuesday, July 18th. Hopefully, all you guys are having a good day so far. Today, we're going to jump into the charts, kind of what, what action we were looking at today, what we did right, what we did wrong. Uh, we ended up taking two trades on the live. We took one loss, one win through, uh, with me and Johnny. So we'll review those, and uh, we'll talk about if there was any other possible setups uh, in the PM session as well. So going into today, I had more of a long bias than I did a short bias. And the reason was, is we ended up opening up and having this low right here. Now, this low at the time, I wanted to see this become market structure shift. But if this needs to become market structure shift, what needs to end up holding here, right? This fair value gap right here, right? Because if we're getting this displacement through this low, notice where we also bounce as well. We've pulled back now to discount from this big range, right? We come back, continue to hold these OTE levels. We go to 0.5, we get 0.62, and we continue to bounce off these areas. And we get a big displacement back up after taking this level here now. Now, we had a lot of discorrelation or actually disconnection, whatever you want to say. There was no correlation between ES and NQ this morning. If I pull up ES here on the left and we go down to um, the one minute, you can see right at the open, ES and NQ completely having no correlation whatsoever. ES having a big pump at the open and NQ absolutely selling off, right? Market opens here, NQ absolutely selling off. Well, ES is pumping. So at this point in time, what is this telling me, right? How can I use this information to kind of understand, you know, what markets want to do at the time? Number one, at this point in time, a lot of the, a lot of the times, the best thing to do is just not take a trade. When ES and Q are not having, you know, distinct correlation with each other, a lot of the times you want to see what, which one is reaching. And that's the kind of like the way I like to think about it. Okay. We come into the market, right? NQ is selling off. Okay, where are we reaching for? Okay, what are we reaching to? Okay. Okay, let me let me mark this out first. Well, on NQ, at the time, we did not yet come to discount, right? When market opened, this is where discount lies. So when market opens, where do you think we're drawing to? Probably discount of whatever this range is, right? That's what we sold off at the open. But if we look at ES... Why do you think we pumped? If you look at the charts, ES has already reached discount. If I draw on this fib, you can see right at the open, we already tap into discount, right? So ES in the morning has already reached discount. NQ has not reached the discount yet of this range, right? So this makes more sense for ES draw on liquidity to be that high, especially after coming down and sweeping this, right? This is a clear, um, this is a clear power of three, right? We have distribution accumulation. This is your manipulation right here, and then we have that distribution, right? So this would be accumulation, manipulation, distribution, right? Clear power of three setup in this morning, and this is exactly what we were expecting to see. Now, the only hard part about taking advantage of this was the discorrelation between ES and NQ. A lot of the times when I see ES and NQ showing different draws. Uh, a lot of the time, I like to stay a little bit more patient and wait for the two to show similar action or a similar draw on liquidity. Because when we open in the morning and we get, you know, big selling pressure on NQ, but we get big buying pressure on ES, a lot of the times we're going to expect, you know, slower action, choppy movement. And that was kind of what we saw at the, in the morning, kind of, kind of, kind of here, kind of here. And then once we get that initial break, we ended up running to that buy side on NQ. So looking at ES, there was actually... Really nice setup in the morning that I wanted to take a long on, but I ended up stopping myself. And the reason why I stopped myself is because I wanted to have a little bit more discipline, uh, noticing that ES and NQ were dis, you know, discorrelating, right? We didn't really have a lot of connections. So zooming in on the one minute, what would have been the setup here? Well, this would have been the setup right here. Come down, we sweep this low. What do we notice? Instant displacement back to the upside, right? Big move back up, big move back up. Now, I wouldn't have taken this I wouldn't have taken this because market opens here, right? Market opens right here. What do we notice? ES comes down, never sweeps this low. So we actually form SMT here. So we form SMT after sweeping the low. If we're looking at ES at the time, ES puts in that low here. So we are absolutely, NQ sells off. ES is looking super strong. So what am I looking for? I'm looking to see this SMT hold. Okay, what do I need to see happen for me to say that this SMT is valid? This fair value gap right here. This bearish fair value gap needs to get 
ran through like it did. So we put this low in, get big displacement back up. When I see this bearish fair value gap get absolutely ran through, I can expect this to be the draw on liquidity is that whatever that previous high is and then that external high. So we end up coming up, coming back into this buy side fair value gap right here. Gets, get, gets bought up, goes straight towards that buy side level. All right, let me, let me go let my dog out real quick. She's tweaking. I'll be right back. All right. So we put in that low. We have SMT. We have liquidity being swept. We get big displacement back up. And we get validation that bearish PD arrays are getting ran through. All of these signs are telling us the draw on liquidity is higher. So this would have been your long entry, that pullback. I was a little bit scared, a little bit afraid to do so. Um, going into the rest of the week, I'm going to trade a little bit more uh, aggressively in certain ways. Um, not meaning more size, but more uh, confidence in the sense that if I see a setup, um, even if it's maybe possibly uh, not a lot of confidence with it, if it is a good setup, I'm probably going to take lower size, which means I'll probably cut the contract size in half for the evaluation account and take advantage of these moves. Even if that we're kind of disconnecting, because a lot of the times, whatever is stronger and whatever the draw on liquidity is, uh, it's going to take over on whatever that is, right? So this was a nice setup here on ES. Looking at NQ, this was the trade that I ended up taking here. This, I got stopped out in the morning. This was the setup here. Now, this is a scout model. It's kind of a scout model. The reason why I say whether this is a little bit of an invalid scout model is because the SMT cuts through price action. But this is what I'm looking for, right? I'm expecting the draw on liquidity to probably be this, this fair value gap. When I see a massive move down, I can see ES is pushing higher, right? ES is pushing, and I start to see ES start to displace back inside this range, right? We're starting to, we just swept this high. We're starting to sell back off, and I can see NQ comes up, rejects this fair value gap. Okay, then what am I waiting for? Right when I see this bullish fair value gap get absolutely ran through, I wait for a pullback into that inverse as well as this. And I entered short. Unfortunately, I put my stop just a little bit too tight. I put it right here. Ended up getting stop hunted literally to the tick. And then we ended up getting a nice sell-off after that. Again, it happens. Good risk management. Good risk. Only thing that I could have done here is just put my stop a little bit higher, probably to the top of that. Or at least maybe consequent encroachment of that wick. And uh, it could have prevented me from getting stopped out there. But I did want to keep a little bit tight risk because I did, I did want to see us continue to respect this. Now, we ended up... Did continue to respect this because the candles never really closed above this for value gap. But uh, just ended up getting a little bit stop hunted on that trade because I set my, set my stop a little bit too tight on that. So again, overall good bias, overall decent trade. Not the you know, highest quality setup. But when we do get moves like this, especially in the morning, whenever we get some sort of big move like this at the open, I can expect that volume to continue to whatever the first macro is. So... If you look at the morning, this first macro on NQ opens up at 950, right? I can expect up until that area that if we get an initial move in the morning, we're probably going to continue to run until whatever that first macro is. And you can see that that macro literally ends right here, right when that whole down move, we literally put low of day right when that first macro ended up starting, right? First macro of open, we end up putting in low of day. So that's something we want to keep in mind as well. So again, not the, not the best trade, not, not a bad trade. What can we learn from this? Stop is just a little bit too tight. So going into the rest of the day, the next trade we took, Johnny took was this long. Again, once we put in this low, we get big displacement backed up. We have internal swept. What are we respecting? What are we disrespecting? If we're bullish, we want to see this get ran through. Notice, right? We pull this inverse over. Right when we break through, we ended up forming equal highs. What do we know about equal highs? They're going to get hunted. When we see us come back and we continue to hold this inverse, right? Oh, notice something I want to talk about as well. We also talked about this for value gap in the live session. I don't know if you guys remember, but when I was talking about this for value gap in the live session, I said, you would not long this. You would, I would much rather want to long this inverse than this massive fair value gap right here. Do you guys remember that? Now, why do you think the reason is? Well, a lot of the times, notice where we are in this range as well, right? If I enter up here, we are nowhere near discount of this range, right? So like if, for example, if I was going to draw on a fib here from the high to this low, this discount or this fair value gap is not in discount. And a lot of the times when we put in equal highs, I want to see us retrace to discount 
before going to take those equal highs. The biggest problem that people take when expecting to see some sort of, you know, equal highs being taken is they'll take this. Right after those equal longs get put in, they think that it, it'll, it'll immediately go back to that. Right when equal highs are put in, you have to wait for more structure. So we end up filling this for buy gap, again, continuing to hold, but look where we actually bounce, that inverse, right? Once we get that initial bounce, he entered long, targeting those equal highs, and then we ended up coming up, taking those out, and then we ended up heading back lower. Now, what could possibly be a long here? This is when we zoom out. The biggest long opportunity, unfortunately, I didn't see this. I was at the gym at the time because we ended up ending the session a little bit. Right here. Five minute. Number one, ES showing lots of strength. First thing I want to notice as well, what's being ran through here? If we come up and take this high, what am I watching for, right? Because this is, this is low-hanging fruit. If this low gets taken and we get that displacement that we did, right? Number one, that 15-minute for value gap gets ran through, right? What is that telling me? Draw liquidity is going to be whatever that recent high. So this is low-hanging fruit. We know this is most likely going to get taken. But this high, how do we gain confidence knowing that this high is the draw liquidity? We use the exact same things. What's being respected? What's being disrespected? So the biggest thing I'm watching on ES is this past 15-minute fair value gap because we came up to this once before, rejected this, and then ended up seeing that recent low. So if we end up breaking through this 15-minute, that gives me confidence that the draw on liquidity is that high. And if we zoom in, you can actually see we initially started to reject this, initially start to reject, and then once we break through, clear draw on liquidity, we end up retracing back to this one-minute fair value gap and then going straight towards that buy side level. So right when ES or breaks through this, again, notice the time around 10 o'clock, where are we on NQ? Right here, we're starting to chop. So what am I looking for on NQ? Looking to see the exact same thing. I wanna see bearish for value gaps getting disrespected and overall structure on a bigger time frame. Five minute, we have that low being swept. We have this big fair value gap here. I want to see us get through this. What's my market structure shift here, right? What am I waiting to see? I'm looking to see displacement to the upside. Chop, 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 chop. Boom. Three candle formation to the upside, taking out that previous high with decent displacement and creating a large five minute fair value gap here. Now, in my opinion, I do not take this long here, initial long. You can. This is a decent, this is an absolutely good long. But the real quality long here is right here. And you might say, Justin, why is, that, why is that a quality long? Because this is where most would get stopped. And let's talk about this. This is, what, this is how overlapping, uh, overlapping uh, models is so, so, so valuable. What, do we, what, do we, what can we notice here? All right, we have market structure shift. We've swept this low. We've retraced now back to discount of this range. So for me to understand the draw is whatever that recent high is, I need the displacement back up and I need to continue to hold this for value gap, right? If we continue to hold, I would expect to see higher because we have break of structure. We have everything else we need, right? So let's zoom down to the one minute. Continuing to hold, comes back up, right? It, at this point in time, I would want to see, you know, a bigger move up. But we end up chop, 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 chop. I actually want to look at where macros were at this time. Accumulation macro comes down sweeps this low. Where are we on the charts? Look at ES. Never takes that low. This is turtle soup right here. Turtle soup entry. A plus, A plus plus setup here. Because when all other traders are entering long, right? Where they enter long here in this initial five minute fair value gap and they're heading higher and they put their stop here and then, hey, my first PT gets hit. Let me put my stop to break even. Or at that recent low, whatever that is. Market's going to come down, stop out all of those traders that were long from that low. While smart money accumulates positions. And then notice right what happens after that stop hunt. After this low gets taken, right? This is a smart money entry jewel. Notice, notice, like actually look what's happening here. Like literally look at this. Notice when all volume and we actually get a move to buy side because we know markets hunt liquidity. So notice everything happens here. Okay, number one, we have that low being swept. Number two, we've retraced now back to discount, right? We know ES retraced to discount already. So that's why ES is running first, right? 
ES is having big momentum to the upside because ES has already, you know, re retraced the discount. Okay. Now NQ has re retraced the discount. Okay. We're bullish. What do we need to see though? Right. I'm not interested in having any sort of confidence that this is the, this is the draw unless we get displacement. Okay. Chop, 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 chop. Displacement to the upside. Wow. We have a fair value gap here. Guys, listen when I say this. Displacement. equals fair value gap. Displacement is a fair value gap. A fair value gap is displacement. For this fair value gap to form, we need a displacement, right? So a lot of the times you will understand what is the right entry based off of the size of the fair value gap in the displacement, right? Because the only way this fair value gap gets created is if we get that level of displacement, right? We get a fast move to the upside, creating an imbalance that then gets distributed back to right? So what happens here? First entries and long could get stopped here. Stop at that low. Markets end up pushing down. Stop out all of those traders that put their stops at the low, right? All of these lows. ES never comes down, has a divergence between ES and NQ. We sweep this low and then notice right here. Boom, 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 boom. Smart money loads the fuck up. Because all of retail has now been stopped. Everybody in retail in this specific case are like, oh my God, you know, maybe my bias was wrong here. They're all, they're all, they're all freaking the fuck out because everybody longed this expecting to see a massive push to go to buy side when in reality, their bias is still right, but they're overall thinking that it's just going to be a clean move. Again, trading is not clean. It's choppy. It's dirty. You're not going to get clean action all the time. When we see markets come back, this is scaring all of retail. Retail is fucking shaking in their boots at this time. They think that their bias is wrong. They take off their position. Smart money loads up, stopping out all of retail traders. What happens right after this? Straight to fucking buy side. Straight move to the upside. Anybody that tells you that, and, 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 they, say that the, and they say that the markets aren't like fucking based off of algorithms like this is literally institutional fucking entry drill it, it to clearly literally clear it cannot be more clear than this so what i want you guys to get out of today and get out of this is not being scared by this learn to recognize and think like an institution this is how i want you to think if i'm in a trade right now where would i put my stop loss right if we go into the day and you have a bias, right? Let's say we're long biased. And let's say, okay, let's say, hey, I would have entered here, but I didn't. Where would I put my stop loss if I was in this trade? All right, my stop loss is here. Watch how the markets react when that stop loss gets triggered and see what happens. And I guarantee you, the more that you backtest this and the more that you watch it, the more that you start to see those highs and those lows of whatever you put your stop would be, they get taken and generated for liquidity for smart money just to push back in whatever that direction is, right? Because the overall bias is right. Your overall bias is going to be right. Bias whatever it is. But you'll get faked like this and think that your bias is wrong because all of this is noise. This is all noise. This is why sometimes it's best just to zoom out, right? And only trade five minute, 15 minute. Because all of that intraday action is all noise. Because that is what retail is going to get stopped for, right? So today was a really prime example of looking at how markets, you know, in the morning, no, like it was a really cool day actually, because in the morning you get no correlation, right? ES is, you know, bumping to the highs. Okay. Why do you think ES? Because we've already retraced discount. NQ didn't retrace discount. So we sold off at the open to retrace the discount and then got bought back up. Okay. If we break through inverse, what do I expect the draw on liquidity to be on ES? Higher. That gives me also confidence that the draw on NQ is probably going to be higher because I'm curious, right? The reason I took that initial short is because when we get ES taking that high and then displacement back to inside this range, that can that gives me confidence that NQ NQ is already weak, right? If NQ is already weak and ES just took buy side, I'm expecting us to probably continue to sell off, right? So I took a short and we ended up getting a sell off. Stop was too tight. NQ or ES breaks through that inverse for value gap, telling me the draw on liquidity is higher. So I have more, I have new data, right? Telling me that, okay, ES doesn't want to go back lower. I, even after sweeping that initial high, we're going to go after that external buy side level. Okay, now I go over to NQ and I'm like, all right, ES is pushing higher. If I can get NQ to show signs that we want to go to buy side, 
it's going to be even a higher quality setup because I have both conviction from ES and NQ, right? So what am I waiting for? Notice no breakup structure, even on a one minute time frame, right? The only long that I would say, like the only really setup I would, I would say uh, is this. We come back down, we sweep this high, you have a break, you get this again, displacement. This would have been a possible long targeting that high. Like that, I guess that, that would have been not a bad long. Um, other than that, once we break through this and then get displacement, that is when you zoom out. Again, all of this is intraday noise. If you look at this one minute, you won't see anything here. Zoom out. A lot clearer. And then we ended up running the rest of the day. There was actually some setups later in the day as well. So let's go over those. So other setups in the day. Clean trend move to the upside, right? If you tried shorting this, you're dumb. Let's talk about why, you, why it's terrible to apps to short this. Number one, l you should learn based off of experience that every single fucking day these last two weeks have just been straight up. If you tried shorting this, you get ran through. Even if we take buy side, notice the displacement. This high, broken through, instantly rejects, right? Okay, you can maybe take a short, right? I would not be upset with you taking a short because markets are actually telling you that, hey, we might want to go back lower here. But when we see NQ come up and take this high, there is no reason you should be shorting this. There is no reason you should be shorting this. Now, this kind of tricks you right here. This kind of tricks you because we take out that high and you're like, hey, market structure shift. We have a fair value gap here. I need to short this. Why would you not short this? Somebody tell me. Why would I not short this? Why is this a lower quality short? Somebody tell me. We have equal highs. Or sorry, I, I, I spoiled it. I spoiled it. We have buy side swept. We have mark search shift and a fair value gap. Why would I not take this? There's equal highs above us, right? We have equal highs above us. We know those these equal highs are probably going to get hunted first. Ends up getting ran through, going higher. Once I see that, okay, I'm pretty bullish at this point, right? Because we're continuing higher. We don't want to go back lower. This point in time, what am I looking for for an intraday model? Pull back to discount, okay? Boom, pull back to discount. Are we bouncing off of PDRA? We are. We have a one minute fair value gap and we just swept this low. Okay, now what am I looking for? Displacement of the upside and a fair value gap. Hey, displacement of the upside and a fair value gap right here. Wow, boom, long entry. This is a trade you could have taken today. Now, somebody asked me in my TikTok live today to answer this question. What would your price targets be if you are going to new highs like this, right? If I was in this trade, right, what would my price targets be? Number one, first price target always going to be whatever that previous high is, right? I'm going to at least scale something there. Now, there's multiple ways that I can look to see what my future price, price targets are, right? Number one, I can use standard deviation. Standard deviation, basically taking whatever the manipulation move is. Now, it, it, on a one minute, it's kind of hard, but this would be the manipulation move to come take sell side, right? So what would I do? Take that. What can I expect? Two to 2.5 is going to be that initial area. That's going to be my price target. And I would let my runner go to four. That's number one. First thing you can do is use uh, standard deviation. Next thing you could do is, is there any external buy side level? So looking to the left of us, there's uh, not really anything there. So can't do that. Number two, try to look at if you have any order flow tool like Bookmap, see if there is any resting liquidity above us and look to target there or near there. Number three, target hole numbers. Where we are right now, we enter 5913. Okay, what would I probably look to trade? Like 50s, right? 5950, right? So 5950. Would it be here, right? Whole numbers, even numbers, stuff like that. But when we are kind of going new highs and there's really nothing to the left of us, a lot of the time you're just writing order flow until something goes against you. And that's another way I like to do it too, is I'm going to continue to hold my long until order flow flips against me. What does that mean? Bullish PD arrays get disrespected. Okay, so I continue to hold, continue to hold, continue to hold. Hey, we just came back down to this range, right? We just came back down to this range. If we come back down to here and violate this, that's probably really bad. Okay, wow, we actually come down, continuing to hold. Wow, we get bounced back up. Wow, we're, we're invalidating this bearish PD array. Wow, okay, bullish flow is, or order flow is still bullish, right? We're still holding these bullish fair value gaps. We're heading towards highs. All right, I'm still holding. 
All right, I'm still going to hold. Again, holding bullish for value gaps. Continuing higher, continuing higher. No break of structure to the downside, right? No break of structure to the downside. No break of structure to the downside. Literally nothing. You could have hold this entire move. Okay. And this is where you would take off your rest of your running position, right? Is when you, is when you put in highs, put in highs, put in highs, and then you start breaking through, right? Now, another setup you could have taken right here. Now, I actually, eh. Okay, so I, I wouldn't take this. And the reason is because we have equal lows below us. But again, continuing to chop, continuing to chop, continuing to chop. Building structure, building structure, building buy side. Now, I would not take this long because we formed these, equal, these relative equal lows down here. And I knew that this was going to come back to you to get taken. So I actually would not have taken this long here. But is there any other long I would have taken here? That's the main one. You could have maybe taken one right here. Um, shorts. Again, I wouldn't have taken one. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much pretty much all I would would have seen on NQ today. Um, so let's take a look at ES, just ES. ES, this was the long I was looking to take. Again, reason I didn't take this long is because at the time ES or NQ, NQ sorry, was um still having you know bearish more bearish flow, uh, and we didn't retrace the discount on this, but. You could have taken this again once you reach. Notice where we are right here as well. If I mark out this fib, notice where we bounced. Consequent encroachment of this wick or of the fair value gap. So when we're in a trend like this and we get kind of get sloppy action, again, notice all these equal highs up here as well, right? Acting as buy side. We come down, we come down, we'll come down. Okay, what am I looking for to enter? I'm not going to enter here right when we touch it. Because I need to see some sort of flow. I need to see some sort of order flow. Meaning I need to see what's being respected, what's being disrespected. Okay, we get initial bounce. Nothing really to the left of me showing anything though. Continue down. Nothing really to the left of me showing, right? We just, reje we just rejected this fucking volume imbalance and then selling off. Okay, we get a big move down. Notice what we have here. A bearish free value gap. Okay, what happens? Boom. Instantly gets ran through. That's your long. Right when that inverse free value gap, we're holding, we're holding this bullish free value gap. We're holding consequent encroachment. Right when we break through that inverse for value gap, this now becomes inverse, and this would be your long, as well as we just created this for value gap as well. So you have BPR, and then you long towards buy side. And then, of course, this would have been another long here. Again, this, this would be actually scout model, because you have clear trend, SMT. Uh, you take with that first for value gap that gets touched into, so this would have been a scout model long as well. Uh, this one, another long here. Actually, dude, there's a lot, there's a lot of opportunity today in these trend days. Again, coming back down, big five minute for value gap. One minute displaces to the downside. Where do we go back to? OTE, end up bouncing right back off uh, discount. We end up going to optimal trade entry. What am I looking for? Displacement back up. Okay, after displacement back up, what am I looking for? Uh, rejection of any bearish PD array. Okay, we have this big one minute bearish for value gap. If I'm bearish, this should respect and go lower, right? What happens? Absolutely gets ran through. What does this now become? Inverse for value gap. Boom, 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 boom. Continue to come back. Continue to bounce. Once you come back into this, you could long targeting buy side. And I actually, I actually drew that, that arrow in when I was at the gym. <laughs> so this was another really good setup you could have taken today on ES. Again, very similar models. Um, wouldn't have taken anything here because we didn't take that low. And then uh, probably there was really nothing else on ES today. Um, all right, so let's talk about what we're going to be looking at going into tomorrow. So again, we want to recognize the price action we've been getting recently. Very, very, very bullish. But now that we're at highs, what do I always say I want to expect? When we're at new highs, what do I say? I want to see structure, right? I want to see new structure, right? Once we took this high, we started to get structure, right? The draw on liquidity became clear to us because we could have a, an actual 15 minute low being swept and then displaced back up. Okay, that tells me the draw is higher. When we sweep this overall high here, and we get displacement low, I need to see some more structure start to form for me to get a better understanding of what the overall bias is. So looking at the 15 minute right now, big move to the upside. So first thing I look at, I need to zoom out and see if there's any sort of bigger time frame imbalance. Number one, you can see that we ended up coming back into that daily for value gap today. And that's where we ended up bouncing off of. So perfectly off that daily imbalance, that fair value gap come, tapped into this big push right back to the upside. 
So this is what I'm looking at going into tomorrow. We have a massive four hour free value gap. This is probably what we're going to be seeing getting touched back into in the overnight session, if I'm being completely honest. If we don't, this is what I'm going to be looking forward to, to come back to tomorrow. We have this one hour order block here that I want to see possibly get touched back into. And we also have these imbalances down here. So a lot of it is going to be dependent on, um, number one, I'm going to be looking to see some sort of retracement into some sort of PDRA, fair value gap, order block. And I want to see the rejection of that to continue long, right? I don't want to fight this trend. I want to take advantage of longs because we've been getting a lot of strong pressure recently. So what am I looking for? Markets come down, waiting for maybe internal. Also would like to see us come back to discount of this range. So if we could come back down here, bounce off that four hour fair value gap, and then look to take a long, right? That's what I'd be looking for as well. Zooming into the 15 minute. Uh, we do have this fair value gap here. Again, I would want to see that get ran through to the downside so we can go to buy side or to discount. We have this past 15 minute here that got tapped into, but nothing really clean. So the only really thing is that big four hour, right? And this is kind of the chart and the price action you'll get when we get massive moves like this, because you'll you'll be left with a lot of big imbalances. Like for example, we have this massive four hour value gap that I still want to see get back met into. We still have this low that I want to see act as sell side. A lot of the times, these are not going to be levels that are taken because we've just been straight up on a very tight area. So going into tomorrow, I'm expecting a very similar thing. Tight pullback, probably continuation of the upside. So our buy side level is going to be that recent high. And I want to see a little bit more action uh, in the overnight session to see what, we're getting, what we can possibly have tomorrow. And then NQ is pretty much the exact same chart. Would want to see us probably come back down to these imbalances, look to see discount, and then look to see some more structure start to form and look to possibly take uh, a trade back to whatever that buy side level is. Any questions? Yeah, I do have a video on, on I have a whole video on my scout model already on YouTube. When we have straight up moves like that, do you normally wait for a little structure to form if you are looking to long? Uh, or will you do it in the one candle pullback areas, if that makes sense? Or will you do the one minute? I, I want both. I want to see overall structure on a bigger time frame, and then I'll zoom in and I'll look to take, you know, those more scalp trades on to whatever the draw and liquidity is. Like, for example, on ES, we broke through that high. We show that the draw is probably higher because we're not having any rejection to the downside. So I'm going to look to take some sort of scalp trade based off of pullback to discount, break a structure back to the upside, and I'm looking to see new highs. Can you show us how to enter SL and TP on Tradeovate for account? Uh, no, because I don't want to put on a trade with the top step account. But I have a video on Tradeovate. Actually, I haven't made a video. So if you want to do it on Tradeovate, uh, I've made a video on how to do it on my YouTube, on how to use Tradeovate and how to put orders. Uh, do you wait for candle close to enter to make sure that fair value gap is getting respected for the huge ideal long trade? No, sometimes, sometimes. And I gr actually, great question, because I'm going to dive into that. So for example, this is what I would want to see, right? Like if, if I'm looking at NQ here, right? And I see us come down, I would not long this fair value gap, right? I would not long this, right? Even though we came back down, we swept this low, I am not going to immediately put a long. What am I waiting for? Internal model, okay? So what do I wait for? Displacement back up. Then I instantly put along here. I don't wait to see this rejection. I instantly long this. I don't instantly long this. I instantly long this. Does that make sense? Can you use the FIB on wider fair value gaps for entries or just areas for price to draw to on ranges? Can you wait? Can you use the FIB on a wider fair value gaps for entries? Um, I wouldn't use it for entries, but more as a heat map. Uh, that's kind of like the way I, I like to use it. For example, like, let's draw the, like, for example, let's do this. We have this massive four hour here, right? Okay, so we have a big four hour fair value gap here. What is going to be the most sensitive areas of this? Probably consequent encroachment. So let me draw that in and let's see what happens tomorrow. This is consequent encroachment of the wick. So let's do C dot E of or actually four hour. Okay. 
So this is the consequent encroachment of the four hour fair value gap, right? So let's see how this area plays out going into tomorrow or just in the, in the next couple of days if we end up coming back to this area. Uh, with the turtle soup trade, where you enter, right when, right, right when you get the rejection. So, looking at the five minute on NQ, right? We come back into this five minute. We sweep this low. We're forming SMT. What's my long? Now, right when I see that, right when I see that bounce, I'm taking longs. I'm not even looking for a fair value gap, to be honest. Now, you can, but a lot of the times, again, if you, you would have waited, there's no entry here. Literally no entry. And the reason is because this is institutional order flow entry drill, which means right when that gets stopped, smart money is loading, you, right? There's no chance for you to get this. So right when that low gets swept, you have to recognize more conditions. Again, it takes time for you to be able to see this live, right? It takes time, especially like you would not expect to see that move, right? If we're looking at the markets right now, you're like, eh, you know, we're kind of still rejecting up here. Now we're starting to sell back up. Oh, I'm, I'm bearish here. You know, I'm bearish. We, you know, we're starting to break down, blah, 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 blah. It's very hard. It takes a lot of time and experience for you to be able to recognize this real time, right? But right when this low gets swept and I look at ES and we're forming SMT and ES is super bullish and NQ, we just broke structure and holding this five minute fair value gap. This is a slap long right when that rejection hits. Okay, where do I put my stop? Put my stop right under that low. So I would long right after that target buy side and I'll put my stop probably right under that low. With, with turtle soup, you do not need a fair value gap. How do you identify SMT on the hand right edge? On the hard right edge, like trading live? What do you mean? You just got to look at ES and NQ. So when I'm live trading, I always have ES and NQ pulled up like this, right? I have ES and I have NQ. So I'm constantly looking at price action, recognizing... What structure is bullish? What structure is bearish? What are we respecting? What are we disrespecting? And you'll see that there's times where ES will take a low and Q won't take a low. That's going to be an SMT divergence. And how you can tell if that is valid or not is, is that SMT pushing towards whatever the draw on liquidity is? So number one, we had that SMT at the low in the morning, right? When I can see ES, we didn't come down and take that low. What is that telling me? ES is very bullish. And when we come up and we end up breaking that inverse, I can expect the draw to be higher, right? Because NQ selling off, ES is having no desire to sell off. So that's telling me if NQ gets a bounce, ES is going to fly. Notice, right when we put a low in right here, get a big bounce up, ES continues with the upside and ends up eventually taking out that buy side level. Same thing with that with the SMT here. What am I looking at at the time? I'm looking at, okay, what is ES and NQ doing? Does NQ come down and sweep this level? Yes. Did ES? No. SMT, what am I watching? The reaction. Once we get that bounce, that's giving me a sign that we're probably going to go back to whatever that recent high is. Which pair do you favor when SMT forms? Whichever one has a clearer draw on liquidity or whichever one is creating the higher low. So whichever one seems stronger. It all, it all has to do with whatever. It's, it's all in the moment for me, to be honest, because it depends on price action. It depends on clear draw on liquidity, and it depends on which one has the higher low, which one has the lower low. What's the difference between turtle soup and the scout model? I find it hard to tell the difference. Uh, they're very similar. The, the thing that I say about the scout model is turtle soup. I, I, I'll say this. The scout model can be turtle soup, but turtle soup cannot be the scout model. <laughs> and the reason is, is for the scout model, you already need a specific trend. Like this would not be the scout model because you haven't had that initial move yet. Scout model is when you already get this big push to the upside, and then you take a scout model continuing to take advantage of the trend, right? Turtle soup is when the trend hasn't even started yet. Does that make sense? All right, guys. Any last questions? Very, this was a great session. This was a great session. I'm hoping you guys learned a lot from this because this was a great day. This was a great day to go back. It's this, this right here. This right here is I want, what I want you guys to study.
All right, guys. Gonna end the session there. Hopefully, you guys learned something tonight. If you have any more questions, feel free to at me in the Discord, and I'll help you guys out. Enjoy the rest of your night. Tonight was a great session. Hopefully, you learned something, and I will see you all tomorrow morning. Enjoy the rest of your night, and uh, get some rest. I'll see you tomorrow. Peace.